This is a 2013 2.2 litre Land Rover Defender 90 TDCI hardtop, designed for farmers. It was made three years before the last old style Defender rolled off the production line to be replaced with the new version. Just kidding, that is the Ineos Grenadier. This is the new Defender. And I need it to be a sort of mobile workshop, capable of charging my camera gear, storing my tools and charging those too. This whole project was made possible because of Jackery's new 1500 Pro that is eventually going to power this whole setup. This is a garage I share with my brother in London, and it's actually not the first Land Rover it's seen. You may remember the time we fixed the clutch on his Series 3. Being in central London, it's got very limited space, so the Defender 90, meaning 90 inch wheelbase, was the only model that would fit. There was a lot of preparation for this one. Hours on SketchUp perfecting the layout, and so many Amazon orders. It was mostly designed around the dimensions of this Pelican air case to contain all my camera gear, the Jackery 1500 Pro to charge everything, and the Sustainer 3 box system for my tools. this way so that the drawer will avoid hitting this little plasticky thing. I then drilled some holes through the sheet metal of the bed and I tried to hit these ribs which are the stronger points to clamp down onto. I ended up drilling three more holes than I wanted as I discovered a better fixing point halfway through but I'll make sure these are all protected from water splashing up because as everyone knows defenders do have a rusty chassis problem. When you drive these things on loose surfaces, loads of little rocks and stones get thrown up onto these panels and it's bloody loud. So I put down some sound insulation before starting the build. I'd made sure to clean the surfaces with white spirits beforehand to make sure the adhesive stuck well. And then I could locate the holes and cut through the insulation. Then it was time to start thinking about wood. For once, I wouldn't be using oak, so I rented a zip van and collected some plywood from my local merchant. Annoyingly, you can't fit a full sheet of plywood into a zip van, which made for a sketchy driving experience. And in case you were wondering, the Defender would need a roof rack to pick up full sheets itself. In total, I picked up four sheets, but only two of which I needed. One was a 40 pound structural hardwood sheet, which I used for the bases and the top, and the other was an 80 pound marine grade plywood, which is a much higher quality. And I used that especially for the sides, which are a bit more important. I cut the cheaper plywood to fit the bed as close as possible. This was going to be bolted down through those holes I drilled, creating a strong foundation for which I could then build everything up off.
I used a chalk spray pen to mark the holes onto the plywood. You can obviously use a pencil before drilling them out and checking with some nails that everything lined up. The previous owner had left this rubber mat in the back, which I repurposed to cover the insulation where it was going to be exposed. I used contact spray adhesive, which is so very handy. Hopefully it won't melt in the heat of summer because if everything goes to plan, this vehicle is going to see some sun. Although being the cheapest Defender model, it doesn't actually have air conditioning. There wasn't enough material to cover this side entirely, but as you'll see later, not all of it will be exposed. With that done, I could take my final dimensions to start building the carcass and the trawl. First, I cut the sides and back of the carcass using the more expensive marine plywood. I fixed the sides down using pocket screws and the back to the sides with countersunk spack screws so I could check the fit in the Land Rover. Then once I was sure everything worked, I took it all apart before gluing and screwing up from the base into the sides. I bought these drawer sliders off Amazon for £130 and supposedly they can take 150 kilograms when fully extended. But clearly you need to make sure you fit them very securely to the carcass. So I managed to track down these perfect washers in my local DIY store. You know the kind if you live in a major city where they have pretty much everything stacked up, you just gotta dig through it. These washers have a very wide outer diameter and are pre-shaped, which was perfect for the holes in the sliders and gives me a little more confidence the drawer won't drop. Then I cut the sides for the drawer itself, again using the marine plywood, which looks like this close up, a nice solid material to screw into, unlike the cheaper stuff that often has cavities. And I want to note that the only power tools I used in this video was a drill, a track saw and a small router, so a pretty accessible project for most people to tackle. It was however quite challenging to keep my cuts square and accurate without a fence to push against, so if you have a table saw or chop saw, this would be a walk in the park. I gave everything two or three coats of this varnish, which is essential to protect the bare plywood from stains and marks. I made sure to get a product that wouldn't yellow the plywood and was fairly happy with the results. I then used the pelican case to line up where to put the middle rail of the drawer, which isn't as wide as the sides. I didn't glue any of these joints, just in case I want to change things around later on. Hey. 
So you can see here the cavities you get between each layer on cheaper plywood. I filled these in with wood glue. Yes, epoxy would have been better. I bought this stretchable carpet, commonly used in van conversions, cut it oversized and glued it onto the base. As I mentioned, I mostly use these stainless steel 40mm countersunk SPAC screws, which worked brilliantly at putting the plywood together. Definitely worth spending a bit more money to use these. The draw again was definitely a tight fit, but rather that way than the other. I pushed some 5mm spacers underneath the draw before screwing it to the sliders. This just means that there shouldn't be any friction underneath the draw, and all the weight is carried by the hardware. I wanted to completely enclose the drawer to protect it from dust and dirt as much as possible. So the solution I came up with was to use these Blum hinges that you'd normally find in a kitchen. They're spring loaded, so need to be firmly fixed to the carcass. The system is very effective. You drill two shallow holes for the locator pins and then you screw through the unit itself. The whole idea of this conversion project is to power and charge the equipment I need to build things but also film them. This includes a bunch of batteries, all with different charging docks, cables, spare batteries, so I needed a place to keep them organised and safe, so a drawer seemed pretty obvious. The challenge was how to get power from the jackery into a moving drawer and the solution was to steal an idea from CNC machines and use what is called a drag chain cable carrier. It's basically a plastic snake that can curl backwards on itself, but only when you fix it the right way around. I then cut a 5 meter 3 core mains cable in half and threaded both through the snake. I then fixed one of these cables into a standard UK socket box at the back of the drawer. The other cable I'll eventually fix to a European socket box, so I have both options. Now I had moving cables inside the carcass, I had to run them out to the jackery.
I'd put the blum hinges as high as possible on the carcass to maximise the space below, so I had to trim these covers which had a small lip poking out. Another feature I wanted from this setup was to access the drawer from the front seats of the Land Rover, so I could check battery levels, swap things over and just have somewhere to store little bits and bobs without having to open up the entire system. So I roughly measured the size of the gap I'd need to stick my hand through and then cut the top into two. Then I used some different blum hinges to fit the access hatch back together with the top of the carcass. The top of the carcass needed some protection too, and I could have used more rubber mats, but I thought an aluminium sheet would look a bit more premium. So this is a two millimeter thick five bar tread plate that I bought online for about 40 pounds. First I used a flush trim bit to get it to size, then a very small round over bit and sandpaper to make it skin friendly. I then did the same for the access hatch before getting ready for a final dry fit. And one small detail I'd like to point out is that I spent some extra time cutting and recutting the aluminium for the hatch so that it looked like one continuous piece of sheet metal. Finally, I fixed some tie down anchors to the back of the carcass in case I ever need to strap something down, added UK plugs onto the cables and plugged it directly into the Jackery. They've just launched this 1500 Pro, which is the same design as the 2000 Pro you've seen on the channel before, but at a more affordable price. The design is shockproof, fireproof, super quiet, easy to handle, charges via solar, mains or 12 volt and as you've seen in this video it can run a track saw and a vacuum at the same time. Two very power hungry bits of kit which have actually tripped the garage electrics before. There are infinite applications for a battery like this so if you're in the market for portable power or backup power for your home I highly highly recommend Jackery. If you use the link down below you'll also receive a 15% Easter discount.
Overall, pretty happy with how this turned out. There were a lot of small margins to work within, but the hardware works, the drawer is solid when fully extended, and everything fits neatly where it should. The only thing that didn't fit is the bloody door card. I hadn't taken into account the yellow drawer locks, which you can remove, but I think I'm gonna look for a slimmer door card instead. The functionality may seem underwhelming to all but a few of you, but this will save me a ton of time and headaches. Everything in the drawer is loose at the moment, and as I use it, I'll figure out the best places to put stuff and fix it down. I also installed some LED lights inside the drawer and at the back of the cargo space, which massively improved visibility. Another feature that's cool is that I can plug the Jackery into the cigarette lighter and top it up while the engine's running. Yes, the work jacket I've been wearing throughout this video is one that I've been developing for nearly a year now. They're up for pre-order via the link below, but as they're still a couple of months away from shipping, use the code DEFENDER to get a nice big early bird discount. Thanks for watching.